come back to another two challenges. I decided to bundle these two up again since they were so similar. The two challenges were Blue Hour as well as Beautiful View. And I decided to embrace what Dubai does best, architecture and some city lights. For these photos, my planning consisted out of two ingredients, location and time. For the time, I had to check when blue hour would be, and I'll get back to that in just a moment. For location, I had to plot where exactly and what exactly I want to photograph, and there's not really a concrete way of me deciding on them. Most of the time, in Dubai specifically, it basically boils down to moving around, noting where photo opportunities would in future present themselves. Tarsus and myself would drive, and then I would like look like that, and he would say, what are you seeing? What are you looking at? And I'm like, I'm just checking for a future a photo opportunity. So it's basically just always scouting whenever you move around. Back to the blue hour. Blue hour, I usually use the app Photo Pills. And that brings us to my tip and trick of the day. Okay, so blue hour, usually lasts between 10 to 20 minutes. So it's less in blue hour and more like blue minutes. So getting your timing correct is crucial. Architecture, cityscapes, and any city lights for that matter, are best photographed during blue hour, instead of when it is pitch dark. The reason for that is, during blue hour, the ambient light has got that blue tint you whatever you want to call it, whereas in contrast, the city lights and the artificial lights, rather I would say, has got a much warmer tone to it. And if you go and look at a color wheel, you'll see that orange and blue are usually complementary to each other. So it just makes the photo pop a lot more. And if you photograph during pitch black, the sky loses all its interest, it's pitch black, and you only get the harsh light, which doesn't really emphasize the buildings that well. And my last tip, hey, look at that, three tips in one this week, is that I went and I um, put my photo pulls up as a widget on my phone, one of the home screens, so that with an easy glance, I can see golden hour, blue hour, when sunrise, sunset, as well as moonrise and moonset will be. Once inside the app, you can then fine tune where you want to be, where the sun rises, where the sun sets. But those basic information is always helpful on a quick glance on your phone without even having to enter the app. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of my scouting happens while we drive around. And there's a new mosque that's been built close by that we pass all the time and I've been wanting to photograph for so long. Thus, when the blue hour challenge popped up, I knew exactly that's what I would like to photograph. But arriving there, I realized that it weren't complete 100%. So at least there were some lights on the mosque already and that's what made me think initially that the mosque was completed. But I would have to find a way to distract from the scaffolding and stuff that's still there while they're busy building.
beautiful view challenge. We had to embrace the terrible Dubai traffic because I wanted to photograph the Dubai Marina skyline from the Palms vantage point. And I thought I would attempt my hand at a panorama for this week's photo. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive from my kit lens to my 70 to 200 and then I'm going to turn my camera in a portrait position and then I'll just shoot across so that I can get the entire skyline and stitch them afterwards in post-production so I will make one big panel. It's golden hour at the moment so I wanted to uh, suss it out and see what the composition I can get but ideally I'm waiting for blue hour so that all of that can light up. Okay, so it's about another 10 to 15 minutes before blue hour. You can see there, it's still very bleak, I would say, so I'm waiting for that to come alive. At this stage, I'm quickly going to show you, there's quite a bit of people. Um, my panel in portrait so that you can get the skyscrapers in full. The trick is I've got them to every time that you move the camera, I can just switch it back on, every time you move the camera so that there's at least one third that overlap. And what I did is I kept this quite loose and I just ran my photo straight through to see that I keep it level all the way through to the end. Okay, so now it's my camera and my husband complaining about the heat. But in all fairness, it is very hot and super humid at the moment. I'm a little bit disappointed because I was hoping in Dubai the big wheel would be on and that will add interest to my photo. Even if you look at my camera here, 
if that was lit up, that in itself could have created a really cool photo. But sadly enough, somebody decided not to put on its lights tonight, so too bad for me. For some reason, the traffic back home were absolutely insane and it took us forever to get home. I love listening to some jazz and blues while editing the photo. It just sets a mood for me. So I decided to take you on the journey with me since this was an especially long edit. I'm going to try to enhance the speed a little bit but still show you my struggles I had with this panorama. I started off by selecting all the photos I took so I could merge them into the panorama and Lightroom does that quite easily for you. I like to switch on the auto crop and auto settings just to get an idea of the photo. There's also three different ways of stitching them which is spherical, cylindrical and perspective. And many times the perspective doesn't work. And if you get that error, don't worry, just go to one of the other ones and see if it can stitch in that. In this instance, it didn't really make that much of a difference. So I just settled on one and stitched them. I should also note that panoramas is one of the things that, that got my computer on its knees. Tasha has really spoiled me with a pretty high-end MacBook Pro. So for him to struggle is really saying something. So once I've hit the auto button, you can see that there's some inconsistencies in the light, especially on the corners. And I think that's due to the amount of city lights on the left side as well as the last setting sun on the right side. And then I delve into my local adjustments and I really went all out with this to try and save the photo and try to balance out those light spots in the composition. The other problem I had was because of the humidity, it was quite hazy and my dehaze slider really helped in this instance. I actually think I used it more than once. And I must be honest, I don't think I would have kept this photo if it weren't for local adjustments because that's the only way I can really try and save it, especially buildings like that where it's so bright and brights up the entire sky around it. It just helps me balance out the photo a little bit better. reason I'm not a fan of this panorama is it feels in balance. The skyscrapers which I'm busy editing at the moment on the left as white and then on the right but it feels like in the middle there's something missing. The mundane residential buildings doesn't add enough interest for it to be center stage and that's why the panor feels a little bit off to me. Of 
course I wasn't 100% happy with Panorama. I decided to go with the Schaefer photo, a single uh, frame exposure of just the marina skyline and exclude JBR's residential area as well as in Dubai. Although my panorama didn't really pay off and I submitted a safe shot, which was a single photo of the skyline. The skyline was a pretty decent shot, although I just feel it lacked something. It felt uncreative to something. But nevertheless, we got out. I got to practice a new skill and I'm not sure I know how to fix the fact that my panorama didn't work out. I'll do some more research on that. But nevertheless, I added a memory into our Dubai drawer. For my mosque photo, I actually was very happy. The only critique I had there is I would have loved the fourth column of the mosque to be in the photo as well. But I had so many limitations like surrounding buildings, the scaffolding, the light trails that I wanted to get in, that sacrificing that one tower weren't the worst thing out there. Next week, I have to step away from my muggle self and embrace my inner Hermione when our challenge is levitation. Thank you, T, for facing the heat with me, the behind the scene footage, and always supporting me in my 52 frames journey. And thank you guys for watching. See you next week.